Hey guys, I'm back with another video. Today I'm going to show you how I made my own Arduino Mega from scratch. This is the bigger brother of the Arduino Uno. From designing the PCB placing the order from JLC PCB, I have included everything in this video. To give the board a professional touch, I gave the Type-C connectivity. Since this is the standard nowadays, First, I went to the Easy EDA online website. Easy EDA is a web-based PCB design and simulation tool ideal for hobbyists, engineers, and professionals. It provides an intuitive platform for creating schematics, designing multi-layer PCB, and running SPICE simulations to test circuit performance. Then I went with the designing of the PCB. The key component in the design was the Atmega 2560IC. The 8-bit microcontroller was from Microchip Company, having the features as the IC is a low-power 8-bit microcontroller. Also comes in the category of advanced RISC architecture. This chip works on 16 MHz clock frequency, having a 4 KB of EEPROM and 8 KB of internal static random access memory. The peripheral features of the board includes two 8-bit counters with separate press killer and compare mode. The IC also have master or slave spy serial interface and also comes with on-chip analog comparator. Along with interrupt and wake up on the pin serial change, when heading down with the pin configurations. Here we use the TQFP package. For the voltage regulation side, we use the on-semi voltage regulator. This has an adjustable voltage, low dropout regulator ideal for our use, and have our output current in excess of 800 milliampere. From the feature side, it has a one volt dropout, and have a good thermal protection and short circuit protection, which ensure the input voltage remains within the specified range. The rest of the data sheet provides other details of the regulator including maximum ratings, internal design structures and different figures with dropout voltage versus load current. The female DC jack is used to take the input voltage and a voltage selectable switch. Then for the connectivity I use the Type-C port. For programming the chip, I use the CP2102 USB to UART bridge controller which was developed by Silicon Labs. The IC is available in 5x5mm and here we use the QFN28 package. For extending the general purpose input output pins, here we use some female header pins. By placing all the components in the specified places, which enables minimal track length, I completed the design process. The Atmega 2560 is placed on the center of the PCB design, along with the DC jack and Type-C port at the edges. When switching the PCB to the photo view, the beauty of the board reveals here. We can select different board colors from here, which is pleasing to the eye. The software provides a 3D view of the PCB, to ensure the dimensional accuracy of the components. Before downloading the production file, it is essential to check the DRC errors. Then along with that, I downloaded the bill of materials of the PCB and the pick and place file for assembly. Once that was done, I went to the JLC PCB website and add the production zip file for PCB manufacturing. There are certain parameters which can be changed as liking. The first one being the color, and I changed the default color from green to white. Then I switched the board for PCB assembly, after that saving the board to cart and placing the order. That's how easy to make the custom PCB. The assembled boards reached me after 6 days, thanks to the express shipping. It's well assembled and no components were missed on the assembly process. The silk screen on the PCB was really nice. For the white PCB, they gave the silk screen text with black ink, which adds up an extra royal touch. When comparing with the commercial Arduino clone, the main head start was changing the typical USB-B connection to Type-C which raised the standards while using the same footprint as the readily available Mega. All shields will be compatible for this board also, along with an extended dual row of GPI opens. For testing the board, here I have opened the basic blink sketch with the built-in LED as output. Then by changing the delay in the void loop from 1000 milliseconds to 200, the LED will have a flashy effect, which will continue in fin times. Then by selecting Arduino Mega as board name and the COM port to which it was connected, the code was uploaded. If everything goes well, the LED on the board starts to blink, hence indicating the uploading was successful, or else you can notice the error on the Arduino ID. This is how you can make your very own Arduino Mega from scratch. I hope you liked the video. If you like it, don't forget to like, share and subscribe.